Hey, what's up guys? So welcome indeed to the Datascape archetype. So we're going to be showing off basically the ins and outs of the deck and kind of answer the question, is it good? Well, do you think a VFD turn one is really good, aka the true king of all calamities? Basically locking your opponent out out of obviously going for any real monster plays and then following up you will be getting basically a macro uh with of course one of their boss monsters making it so any uh cards from the field of the graveyard is actually banished instead so uh this is basically how the deck can run this is uh, one little thing that you can do you don't even have to have the uh dragonic diagram to actually pull this off but in our instance we can go ahead and make some use out of it um I, obviously you this card is really good in the deck. The reason why it's so good is uh, if this card is destroyed, you get to add one non-worm wind, and there's a lot of uh, worms in this as an archetype. You can search out a lot of different cards. The One of the good opening cards is ZZ over here. Um, if our opponent happened to go first and they threw out a monster, this would give us instant access to potentially stopping some of the hand traps that would come out, because if they activate a monster effect and they don't control the uh, monster effect with the same attribute, you get to go ahead and negate it. That's why I like opening up with Long Long to potentially have better plays. Obviously, our opponent really needs to go first and have a monster, which that's not that uncommon in Yu-Gi-Oh, right? But that doesn't even stop our uh, normal summon because we still technically have that. Uh, so in this instance, we're going to go ahead and just target that card. Uh, how the archetype works is if you uh, control a datascape uh, card, you get to have a bonus effect. So with Lin Lin, you get to go and special summon it, target one, which is in this case, it's this. You get to send one uh, card that could be a trap, or you can go ahead and send a spell. And then you get to go ahead and have that effect where uh, you get to send one with a different type. So basically, uh, we went for the... Uh, uh, King Long, which goes ahead and lets us add any of the Datascape cards that we want. We went ahead and uh, activate the effect of going for ZZ into the grave, and then we're going to go ahead and just summon Lao Lao. We instantly can go into uh, rank 6 plays with this. Uh, if we want to, if our opponent happened to make a board, uh, we can go and make um, the uh, Fang Fang over here. So this is a detached two materials, target a face up card your opponent controls and one card in either graveyard and banish so you can kind of get plus with it. If you need to get rid of a specific card, uh, you can go ahead and make that as an option. There are other cards obviously that you can play in the deck. This is more so keeping it to where like it's the new content. Uh, but with that effect, we're also able to go ahead and resummon it's easy. Uh, it's effects negated, but it doesn't matter. And let's just go right into Jan Jan. So uh, Jan Jan is the boss monster where uh, it has that effect where any card uh, sent from the field to the graveyard is banished instead. So it's kind of like a macro effect. And then on top of that, during your main phase, except for the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you get to banish two other monsters with different types and attributes, which will be, uh, it's gonna be uh, Worm, Earth, and then also Psychic Wind. So it's really easy to go ahead and make this card. And then you can just activate this a card uh, that we sent from the uh, deck to the graveyard to go ahead and increase the level of one of our sixes to go ahead and make it into a nine. Alternatively, if you want to, instead of going for this play, yes, you can go ahead and keep this card on the board. That way you have a macro plus VFD, uh, but you can keep this card as an extra negate. Uh, those are basically your go-to options. So with this card, if you want to detach immediately for some of their proc effects, depending on what you increased, you might be able to get a bonus effect. But as soon as uh, your opponent's turn starts, uh, you don't have to detach one immediately, but um, you can, as soon as your opponent starts, yeah, you want to get rid of that. But I'm playing as if my opponent was actually there and we would attack or whatever the case may be. But uh, we would activate this. They would have to set everything pretty much because remember, there's not going to be any attacks, nor can they activate monster effects. And on top of that, this card, for, with this bonus, we get an extra stat point. But it's got 3,000 attack and your opponent's not going to attack. The following turn comes around and what you would then do is go ahead and summon your uh, Jin Jin and then have instant access to this card, which again is a macro, and since your opponent set everything, then you can go ahead and activate this effect again if you didn't activate it the first turn, then you can go ahead and try to push for game. That's like the basic uh, ins and outs and what you try to do in this deck, uh, but uh, this is also great um, uh, synergy with the Earth one, but that's just one combo. Let's go ahead and hop right into a, another like basic uh, understanding of what you can do with this deck turn one. Introduction to the deck of what you can do turn one. So we're gonna go ahead and do this kind of step by step. So. Let's go ahead and get started with our first play, which is going to be just activating a card so we have a face-up data escape. That is like so important for the archetype. Um, it's just what's required, but uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue on. So we're going to go ahead and get the effect of that. Going to go ahead and place a face-up card. Now, in this instance, we went with Zeke versus the other card because we want to go ahead and send the uh, spell to the graveyard, which is going to be the continuous one, King Long. King Long has that effect where we get to banish a data escape 
uh, car from a graveyard and the target face up monster negate but there's nothing here because it's the introduction here so the next thing that i want to do is go ahead and be able to have this as a live effect where we target a face up car on the field shuffle or banish and then we get to destroy a target so again it's kind of the same like this one gets to go ahead and negate one this one gets to destroy but if i go ahead and have this one face up instead of the other one the other option is i get to banish this to go ahead and search out another card this allows me to go ahead and make vfd without having uh the instant access that we normally would have to them so we would go ahead and just start special summoning a bunch of them a lot of them have the effect of just target a card and then you could send another card i've actually thought about it and i'm thinking like just start sending a bunch of these to the graveyard is, is quite great well it does have that effect of being kind of like an impermanence you just just get to negate one basically you don't have to banish one but for the most part you'll have that it's not that much of a problem again just go and special someone send one to the grave so you can set up for next or next turn you'll be able to add another monster and then uh we're going to go ahead and once again have the same effect send one to the deck and then we'll get that extra effect in this instance i'm just sending all these don't worry you can get those back remember uh you get to target one face up card on the field shuffle two of your banished data escape cards with different names so uh even though we're sending all these to the graveyard each one of these is a plus one anyways right so then we go ahead and we can go ahead and make the uh gen gen and gen gen over here is that card where again has that effect to be able to uh, make it so any card sent from the field to the grave is banished and then we're going to go ahead and have this card increase the level of one of the level sixes in this case it's lao 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 uh, will then be at level nine and we can go ahead and make vfd now you have two options here uh to make another um if you want to go for the synchro you can go do that i'm not sure what i consider to be better uh i went ahead and made the jia 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 has the effect of um you attach material target a face-up monster you control and it can't be destroyed by battle until the end of your opponent's turn so what you can do is you can kind of protect the true king even harder if you want to but it pretty much protects itself because nothing is going to be able to of course attack anyways but you can go for whatever you want you can go into uh, juju over here that makes it so uh it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects we have two more monsters i think if you wanted to by the way this card i, I think is very mediocre to go for turn one obviously because it's effect is non quick effect but it lets you attach two materials, uh, which again, instead of making whatever, we can make this card instead. Uh, we get to go ahead and target one face-up card or opponent controls and one card in either graveyard and then just banish them. So it gets rid of like two cards potentially, but more than likely it's just going to be one in this day and age in Yu-Gi-Oh. But if this card is exceed summon, is destroyed by an opponent's attacking monster, you can just push some two data escape monsters from your deck with the same type and attribute as each other. So there is some potential, but it does require your opponent to actually get rid of it uh, by an attacking monster. More than likely, you're not getting that effect off. So you can go for whatever you want. I think that this one is probably one of the better choices. So this is the Long Long. This is another rank three. So instead of Jia Jia, you can go for Long Long. And his effect is when this card has material, your opponent can't target it with card effects. Not that it matters because you're going to make it so they can't really do anything with their uh, cards anyways uh, in terms of the monster effects. But uh, as a quick effect, when your opponent uh, activates the effect of a monster with an attribute that is not on their field while they control a face up monster, you get to negate that um, effect. It doesn't destroy the card, which is kind of unfortunate, but for a rank 3 with uh, 2400 attack, I think it's okay. There is like better, you know, rank 3 options, but this is of course for the archetype. So what you would do in this scenario is basically go ahead and make him and then um, you'd be able to potentially have one negate plus this as like a negate everything. And this is just more of a follow-up. Uh, but it does detach two, so that can be quite nice uh, as this card only detaches one, which would be helpful because when we VFD on their turn, we're obviously going to go ahead and detach, um, I think as soon as their turn starts. Now, one th interesting thing with uh, this is with the effect of, oh my gosh, which one was it? it got, I think it might've gotten put back. But with ZZ over here during the end phase, um, you get to add a data escape monster from your graveyard back to your hand so you can add whatever you want. But keep in mind, you do want to have those two targets, which obviously in this case, if our opponent had something, we'd be able to just detach this and then protect this card even harder. Therefore, we'd be able to get this card back uh, the next uh, turn anyways, just like you guys already saw, but that's kind of pointless. But we also have the trap card live. So 
Technically, there's like two disruptions. I think the deck is still in its like earlier phases, but um, let me know guys if you guys like this introduction to the archetype instead of normally getting some gameplay of it versus a uh, deck. I think this is much easier to understand that way we don't have to worry about anything kind of just going wrong, but we basically show that you can go for everything uh, in the deck. Um, in fact, some of the cards that I didn't get to mention, uh, there's a lot of psychic cards, like uh, I guess you can run Tack and Tom board too. That one locks you to wins, which means well, there's no this card, which is pretty much the only thing that I feel like this archetype does on its own. Um, other cards would be very viable. Uh, e Itelli, um would be obviously another great card in this. I just wanted to keep it as, as pure as I could just to show you guys kind of how the deck wants to play. Uh, there's another card that I didn't get to go over. It's a, it's really viable when you get super late into the game. Uh, but the uh, small card over here lets you instantly place one. Um, has this awesome effect though. Um, so... It lets you place one data escape card directly from your deck in the face up uh, spell and trap zone. Unfortunately, there's just not much in the archetype right now. Uh, in terms of the traps, like they really need one more trap. But it, um, you have to apply the effect, uh, the applying the following effects in sequence based on the number of data escape gate cards you control. Obviously, you guys saw from the gameplay, you can get all five monsters real easy. As long as you can throw one face up card, you're just able to send all of them, which is great for the archetype. Uh, but. Um, you're going to be able to boost their attack by 200, it's really mediocre, but it does happen to make this card have 3k attack, so it helps out quite a bit. Or you can send the top 3 cards of your deck to the graveyard, which is kind of, kind of RNG. With 4, you get just uh, special summon up to 4 data escape monsters with different names from your extra deck. Now, that seems like it's pretty cool and OP, right? However, if you're going to have that effect, it really comes down to basically just getting 2 of them, depending on how you set up your zones. Uh, but that's still a really great effect. And then on top of that, you can only activate one of them. But again, at the end of the day, that's that's an insane effect. Just getting out, you know, two of whatever you want uh, out of the archetype still at the end of the day, that's going to be more reactive during uh, your turn. Obviously, you have to activate it. And then most of the stuff in the archetype is just too slow. Uh, that's just the way I see it. Um, over here, we do happen to have that effect where we get to um, destroy one target. We do get to negate, but it's not like quick effect. I guess technically with this, yeah, maybe. But for the most part, it's just not enough as of right now. But that's a little introduction to the Datascape archetype. Let me know, guys, how you like uh, this format of a video versus normally just, again, getting some gameplay, not being able to show off everything. This way I can show you, like, everything in the ins and outs of the uh, deck. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new here, subscribe, turn on the bell so you don't miss out. And maybe I'll upload uh, some more gameplay versus, like, an actual play later down the line with this deck. But again, I just... I don't think you can keep up with the, most of the link decks since you are technically locked in to um, not going for uh, anything other than uh, going for the level slash rank 3 or higher monsters, which, you know, that's not going to let Needle Viper go off. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch you in the next vid. Peace.